three different times in the Gospels, Jesus specifically says that the only unforgivable sin is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. In Matthew, Matthew 12, 30, he says, He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. Therefore I say to you, any sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven people, but blasphemy against the Spirit shall not be forgiven. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. So Matthew says, you're going to hell and there's nothing you can do about it. Mark says, um, I'm going to fast forward, whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin because they were saying he has an unclean spirit. See what Luke says. Uh, Luke says, everyone who confesses me before men, the son of man will confess him also before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied, be denied before the angels of God. And whoever speaks a word against the son of man, it will be forgiven him. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him. So according to the Bible, you're allowed to criticize Jesus and talk crap about Jesus all you want. But if you speak out against the voice in your head, then it's an unforgivable sin. Now, why would that exist? Probably because we've had neural implant technology since before Jesus, and it's been a major focus of our research. Um, we are like experts on computers and brains. Um, so, um, we wanted to make sure that people would have to listen to the voice in their head. Because think about that. Three times in the Gospels, not in John's Gospel, not in John's Gospel, John doesn't ever say that it's an unforgivable sin. But Matthew, Mark, and Luke say it. And um, why, why does John not say it? Probably because John ended up in prison at the end of his life because he was listening to the freaking Holy Spirit too much because he trusted the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit... Did not work out very well for John. <laughs> like that's why John it, like died in prison. Uh, he he decided the whole, he probably did, he, he probably didn't want to tell everyone that it's an unforgivable sin to blaspheme against the voice in your head. All right. So at this point, Paula White's going. There's no way I'm joining you. I'm an important person. I matter so much. The president is with me. I know the president of the United States. I'm friends with Franklin Graham. I'm a very important person. There's no way I can join a cult. You called it a cult. The cult of Jesus is a cult, you said. Well, all of them are cults. Right now, Christianity is a cult anyways. So it's for me, it's still the cult of Jesus. But for, for you, it's like everyone else shouldn't exist. Well, Let's think about how you got to this point. First of all, Alexander the Great conquered the world and turned everyone pagan, which means they all had idols and crap. And when everyone has idols, um, especially idols made out of precious metals, um, it is um, very, it's a very good idea to steal all their idols. So um, one of the core tenets of all of our religions that we create, I'm talking about the Illuminati, I'm from the Illuminati, uh, we create religions and they allow us to steal from people long term. Um, at one point, the Catholic Church was pretty dominant um, in, in, in taking people's money. All right, so um, at one point in Christianity, there was something called the iconoclast movement, which was the anti-idolatry movement which um, involved taking everyone's golden statues and stuff like that. So there had been a ton of mining done. The money was spread out. We didn't take all the wealth for ourselves. I'm talking about the Illuminati because we were just citizens. Like uh, you, it's, it's, it's hard to take everyone's wealth. You don't want to turn them into slaves. So you just spread out the money, but then you have them want to own something stupid for themselves like an idol. And then you create a religion where you can take all their idols. And that's what we did. And so that's what the iconoclast movement was all about in Christianity. But if you have read about Islam, Islam, um, what happened is Muhammad came and he took everyone's idols and he put them inside the Kaaba. 
Um, so you know how everyone bows in direction uh, in the direction of Mecca, and there's this box in the middle of Mecca called the Kaaba, and everyone bows at it. That's where Muhammad put everyone's idols. So Islam, just like Christianity, is against idolatry, but it's even more against idolatry than any other religion. Like they they would never have a statue in a church, but a lot of Christians wouldn't have a statue in a church either. Uh, Catholics would for sure. They, they're all about statues like of the Virgin Mary and stuff. All right. So they're all, Catholics are also all about saints. All right. So, um, what I'm trying to say is, um, Islam was invented to steal everyone's gold statues and to steal everyone's gold. Christianity was invented for multiple reasons, but it was, I mean, they were all invented for multiple reasons, but Christianity was especially invented to steal people's statues and also to overthrow the Roman Empire in order to take all their gold. Because if you know about the Roman Empire during Nero, when he when the Roman Empire was evil and they hated Christians, um, they had a lot of money. They were very the Roman Empire was super wealthy. But after the Christians overthrew the Roman Empire um, through Constantine, um, the money started getting watered down. And that's why by the time that there, uh, that Rome was f centered in the Eastern Roman Empire, you know, in Constantinople, um, their money was pretty watered down because uh, we had come in there and taken all their gold because we overthrew Rome and Rome was brutal. And, and so after we overthrew them, then we could just, we just took all their gold. I'm talking about us, the Illuminati. All right. So um, that's the true history of religion. That's why religion was invented to, um, control people and to make people stupid. And it's really frustrating for me now because I'm trying to convince people to save the planet, but no one cares because don't worry, I trust Jesus. And it's like, yeah, I trust Jesus not to snitch on me. <laughs> I trust Jesus. I think like, I'm pretty sure I actually do trust Jesus. I mean, I, I trust the clone of Jesus. He's a nice guy. I don't even trust that he's a real clone of Jesus. Like, I, I don't even know that. I, I just know that we decided that Scott's a clone of Jesus. So um, it, it worked. It, I don't know. I don't even know if he is actually Jesus. So, all right. Well, great talk.